The subject of this video is the GDL82 system checkout, which is the final step of the installation. In this video, we'll show you how to perform the ground checks that are required to be performed following the installation of the GDL82. Once again, this will require the use of the GDL8X install tool. Instructions for downloading and installing this software can be found in the GDL82 install tool video. Remember the information in this video never replaces or supersedes information and procedures shown in the GDL82 install manual. To begin the system checkout procedure, connect your computer to the GDL82 as directed to by previous videos in this series. All ground tests are performed using the GDL8X install tool. So, once your computer is hooked up and running, apply power to the GDL82, then start the install tool application. When configured correctly, the GDL82 will enunciate failures associated with interfacing systems. You can see the fault enunciations on the Diagnostics Fault page. Active faults will show in red. Correct any enunciated failures before you proceed with the ground checks. There are two primary types of checks to conduct. One involves the GPS and the other involves verifying that the GDL82 is communicating properly to interfaced equipment. For the GPS checks, we first determine whether the unit has an internal GPS SBAS receiver. If so, we conduct the checks for an internal GPS source. To begin the internal GPS source checks, turn all of their avionics off, leaving only the GDL82 powered. Using the GDL8X install tool, go to the GPS page. Make sure the receiver can obtain a 3D fix or 3D differential fix. If this doesn't happen, move the aircraft away from any obstructions which might prevent the antenna from seeing satellites. You may need to move out of a hangar if no GPS repeaters installed within the hangar. If the GPS solution doesn't improve, troubleshoot the GPS antenna installation. Note that it can take up to 20 minutes for initial position acquisition. Subsequent acquisitions will happen much faster. Once the unit is receiving a satisfactory signal, move the aircraft to a known reference position and begin by verifying that the latitude-longitude information agrees with the known reference position. Now monitor the GPS page while energizing the avionics one by one and observing that after each device is turned on, the GPS fix has not changed. Next is the interference check. Before beginning this test, verify that any connected devices are transmitting and or receiving data from the GDL and are functioning correctly. Transmitter testing of a non-avionics device must be checked by transmitting on each frequency or channel for at least 30 seconds. Using the procedure shown in section 8.1.1 of the install manual, check each VHF COM transceiver for interference by transmitting on the listed frequencies for a period of 35 seconds while monitoring to ensure that the 3D fix is maintained. Note that frequencies in the list are for 25 kHz channel spacing. Additional frequencies must be checked if you have a unit with 8.33 kHz channel spacing. Again, those checks must be performed for each COM transceiver in the aircraft. If the aircraft is equipped with a TCAS or TAS unit, turn on that system and monitor the GPS position for continued validity. If there's a SATCOM unit in the aircraft, turn on that system and again verify the GPS position stays valid. In either case, if the GPS status changes to acquiring, you'll need to troubleshoot the problem. The external GPS source check is less extensive than the internal GPS source check. It involves allowing the external GPS source to acquire a position, then verifying that in the GDL8X install tool software on the GPS page. If the NAV status box shows a valid fix, then the check is complete. Now we'll move on to the interface checks, which begin with verifying the GDL is properly communicating to the interfaced equipment. First, we check the transponder. This check verifies the GDL is receiving the correct input information from the transponder. Viewing the ADSB page on the install tool, select the Alt mode on the transponder. Check the interface status field showing green, indicating that the unit is receiving. Then verify that the mode field shows the same as the active transponder. Verify that the squawk code is the same as the transponder. Press IDENT on the transponder and check that the reported IDENT status shows active for about 15 seconds and then returns to inactive. And finally, check the pressure altitude field to make sure it agrees with active altitude source inputs. 
If the GDL82 is connected to any external switches, you'll need to perform the following steps to check the discrete inputs. In the GDL8X install tool software, go to the Discretes page. If an air ground switch is installed, verify the switch indicates active when the switch provides a ground signal and inactive when the switch provides an open signal. If an anonymous mode switch is installed, verify the anonymous mode discrete changes state when the switch is moved. Active should indicate when the switch is in the enabled position and inactive should indicate when it's in the disabled position. If either switch doesn't respond correctly, troubleshoot the wiring and the switch for proper operation and connection. If you connected an external enunciator to the discrete output, you determine the status of that switch on the discretes page under discrete output. Toggle the output to active by checking that box. Observe the label goes to active and the external enunciator illuminates. Then toggle the output to inactive by unchecking the same box and seeing inactive displayed and the enunciator should extinguish. If the enunciator doesn't respond, troubleshoot the wiring and the enunciator itself. Congratulations, you have now become familiar with performing the system checkout procedures for the GDL82 installation. This concludes the demonstration of the GDL82 ground checks in the system checkout procedure. Thanks for watching and for buying Garmin.